have their own base, not even needing a tower, not even needing a creep wave, and GG! Na'Vi will break the three back first and take for the first time ever their title. Welcome to the ASSR Dream League, where we're bringing back fringes and good Dota like it was TI2. That's true. And speaking of good Dota, this is what we've got in store for you today. Virtus Pro against Rox Kiss are going to be first up on all a Russian affair. We're going to see who comes out trumps in there. Rox Kiss looking to be the favourites. Next in line is going to be Alliance versus Meet Your Makers. Qualified first Meet Your Makers from the West Division for Europe, and they hopefully will put up a good fight versus Alliance. And last, we've got Team Dog versus Alliance, so we're going to see them twice today, and it's the first time we see Team Dog in the Asus ROG Dream League, so we'll see how they do. And of course, I'm James Hugood Harding, but joining me on the panel is going to be Bruno in his lovely shirt. How are you doing, Bruno? I'm as happy as I look, James. <laughs> That's very, very, very happy. Uh, commentating again today, uh, we brought back popular demand, maybe, or just no one's available. It's Andy and Lumi. How are you guys doing? Good. Ready Pretty to cast some dough, yeah. man? Yeah. yeah. Excited. And here to give you your one dollar's worth from the compendium, secret stretch goal, all the way from Ireland, the first ever Irish commentator to ever be on a show this big in the world ever, it's Shane. Hello. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I can give them their one dollar worth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I, I got it's mine off camera. Uh, <laughs> so. No, I didn't told you not to tell anyone. <laughs> so that was fine. <laughs> Um, all right, yeah, so uh, of course we're, we're five people on camera today, which means um, we do apologize to production to make them work really hard with the camera work and um, yeah, but we can't do anything about it. We just wanted to get everybody on the show. We should also say thank you to our sponsors, uh, Asus ROG and Rocket. and uh, this is up for grabs this week. You just need to head over to facebook.com forward slash ROG Nordic and at the end of uh, Wednesday, you're going to want to put in your vote for the MVP mm -hmm. of the week. So far, I think Dendi is definitely up there, yep. mm -hmm. but we've got two Alliance games today and who knows if one of the teams are able to take down Alliance, um, you know, the, the player in that team, if someone played amazing, could literally just be the MVP right now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's going to be interesting, though, to see Team Dog, like if they bring their A game, <laughs> a game today. I mean, it sounds weird saying Come Team on. Dog, but, you know, everyone's like, oh, man, Alliance are going to crush him. But I, I talked to Fogged, yes. right? I talked to him, and he's like, we got some tricks up our sleeve. So. Okay, I mean, that's good, but at the same time, I feel really bad for Team Dog because it's a team that, name by name, has a lot of potential, but their big debut at a league, playing against Alliance of all teams... That's good, there's no pressure. Well, there's lots of pressure. There is no pressure. If uh, no, I think, like, I think there's no pressure. Yeah, I think no there pressure. is no if, if you start winning, it changes a lot. Like, if you start winning, you're like, okay, we've got this. If you start losing, even if it's against the best team in the world, I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Blue? Well, I love puppies and their doggies, so I have to win. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, Mr. Green. <laughs> I can't argue with that. I, I, I think that, honestly, like, sure, Lions, probably the favorites, but I want to believe, man. Yeah. I want to be a believer. You left your dog when you came over, I didn't know, you? Yeah. 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 I love him so much, and I really wanted to bring him, but, you know, I couldn't. Who's he, he with now? Pussycats. Uh, my mummy. Hi, mummy. <laughs> he said <laughs> he had to cat. do that, by yeah. the way. 
Um, okay. Um, so, um, yeah, some league info. Uh, Bruno, what have we got? How's the compendium doing? Oh, um, the compendium is still in the works. We're waiting for Valve as usual. It's probably going to roll out in the next patch or the other. I don't know. It's it's up to Valve. Hopefully this week we'll have that. Uh, from our end, it's looking really, really good. Yes, we've been <laughs> working on the compendium. Bruno made me stay up two hours extra last night when I was really tired to work on the compendium. But because I was so tired, I did about two lines of work <laughs> and then fell asleep. And then I told him I'd wake up early and work on it. And then, of course, because he made me stay up late because he peer pressured me into working with him. I woke up late and didn't work on the compendium this morning either. But we, we've got the start of the... Everything we want in the compendium to get go is mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So the we're just building like week one content and other stuff. Yeah, the trick about the compendium is that it's going to get updated every pretty much every day, I'd say. Uh, adding stuff like highlights of the day before. Yeah. So interviews. Interviews, or stuff everything like that. that's going to happen. It's going to be right there in the compendium. So just... I mean, it will grow, grow, and uh, by the end we'll have like I don't know, 500 yeah, pages yeah, or something. Build their Who expectations knows? high. Bruno. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just more work for us to do. Uh, but how are the stretch goals going? The stretch goals are great. I mean, we hit sixty thousand dollars today early in the morning before I woke up. Uh, so that means the chainsaw from Patch. Have you released a picture of it yet? No, because Danny then said I don't want to release a picture that's not looking so good. So I'm gonna send you a picture tomorrow, and he didn't send one to me yet. Okay. So, but tomorrow is not finished, so he still has about five hours and twenty minutes to do it. So okay, so within the five hours and twenty. Danny, I'm on to you. Yeah, Danny can bring over the uh, the Pudge chainsaw, which yep. is uh, the sixty thousand uh, dollar increase. Um, sorry, reward for increasing the prize money. Yep. Um, so well done, everybody in the community. Thanks for supporting us and also the players who are going to get a piece of that in the prize money. I think every team now gets a minimum of three thousand dollars. Three thousand one hundred and forty-five dollars. Yeah. So team. pretty amazing thus well, that's far. More than many teams earned in their entire pro career, I'd say. Hmm. That's it's probably yeah. true. Yeah. It's That's probably, probably true. true. Yeah. And they also get a revenue split from the stream, mm -hmm. uh, the teams as well. So even if you're just watching here, um, you're, you're helping out the players yeah. as well. By the way, teams. the ticket is free to watch. So even if you're watching now in the stream, like, I want to keep watching in the stream, but I also want to watch in the client because I want to move the camera and just check on the items of people. You just go, even if you don't have a companion ticket, you can go and watch the stream for free. All right, and of course, uh, you can get hold of us today as well via Twitter. Yes. Uh, Bruno, how are they going to do that? Because I'm uh, sure a lot of people are going to have questions for sure. Right. So essentially what you're going to do is go to tweet at DH Dream League. Uh, and later on, not right now, later on after maybe the first or the second game, we're going to read everything that's there. And if there are some nice questions. You make I'm a gonna, lot of promises. I'm, I'm going to read everything. <laughs> I'm not going to read it to them. Uh, but, okay, you but will I'm read, gonna everything. read everything. Okay. I, I don't want it to. No, I'm just going to read the last few. I'm going to read everything. I'm going to choose the ones that I like the most, whether it's question for the panel, things like analysis for the game or something just funny. And I'm going to read them out loud and we can discuss about them. All right. Yeah. So uh, make sure you uh, tweet and uh, Bruno will be on that. And uh, questions can be to anybody and about anything as well. Even if you just want to ask something Dota related, maybe we'll get Lumi and Draskal fighting over who knows more, which, of course, none of them do. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, the league info to give you information. Uh, we started 100,000. We're now to $160,000. Yes, 163,000, um, Completely irrelevant. No, it's nice. <laughs> it's like, I like seeing the number grow. Okay, I like okay. numbers. Uh, and of course, we've got 12 teams this season. So with 12 teams, we've got more games and they all kicked off yesterday. And that's exactly where we're going now. So yesterday we saw Na'Vi versus Fnatic as our first game. It was Na'Vi who ended up taking the win, but Fnatic did bring in a Meepo. And we've got a little highlight here for you, Andy and Lumi. Yeah, so this game was really interesting. It's showing off basically a support Meepo, which I dare say I don't think I've ever seen no. in competitive, like at all. And this is pretty much the fight that I think turned the game around and not in favor of Fnatic, ironically, because they just got Roche. We thought they were going to be winning because they just got Roche on, but No Tail just jumped up the cliff. And unfortunately, the rest of the team does not have Blink Dagger to follow along. And it was kind of uphill fight that you don't want to take. And well, Fnatic went downhill from there. Yeah, and this huge crush by Havos, like that was just fight ending. If there was any chance for some kind of retreat tactic right there, that pretty much just ended it. And this was kind of a game of Blink Daggers too. I yes, think, what, yes. three or four members of Na'Vi went Blink that game? Three on one side, and I think Fnatic got two at the end with the Batrider pick, yeah. or a Doom picking one up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, overall it was it was really cool to see something new, but Fnatic just a little bit too greedy. Yeah, and uh, Shane, I was watching this backstage of you, and you were like, Dendi's just going to wreck face yeah, a little soon. Yeah, he died soon. early in the game, and then like later on he just kind of like, what was it, like the 12 minutes or 13 minutes he got his Blink Dagger? It was really, really early and then just destroyed everything. Like, yeah, he went Blink Dagger before the BKB because mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. guys were thinking maybe a BKB would be the yeah. pickup to yeah. 
negate Meepo, but you think the Blink Dagger was good for them? Well, it's about that and all the minus armor. You could just move on top of them and they couldn't run. Like, because they had the slider with the Blink Dagger and we mm -hmm. got a Vanguard as well, yep. didn't he? And he just, like, they just kept on chasing with the minus armor with the Dazzle to keep taking. Like. Uh, yeah. And yep. he was the, well, we say he was the player to talk about that game, really, uh, Dendi. But let's, uh, let's move on into the, uh, the game that happened afterwards. Navi had to play again and they went versus Virtus Pro. Now, Virtus Pro, a lot of people are saying, the team that have a lot to prove. Mm -hmm. uh, last season was not great for them whatsoever, and they had to go up against Na'Vi first. And this game finished in Na'Vi's favor within 18 minutes. But what exactly went down? I just think their team had way too many methods of counter initiation. Like you look at VP, of course, they went with a drow and kind of an aura strategy with the vengeful spirit, which seems kind of strong on paper. But even with the laning phase going better than I think it should have for them, they still didn't have anything in the tank to deal with Habos after he got. He recovered from his getting first blooded into getting a pretty fast orc, and I think it was 11 minutes, and then it was just all yes. downhill. Yeah, this game just really showcased the range, the power of range, and again, Blink Dagger. I think this game ended up with four Blink Daggers on Navi. Uh, of course, Havos has one built in on Storm Series, so mobility and, and range is the key. And I think there wasn't a single black hole that game that actually hit more than one person. I mean, but the, the funny part about it is that it wasn't necessary because they just managed to get kills anyway. VP die so fast that they yeah. don't think they ever had two alive at the same time, so it's not good. Yeah. And of course, uh, again, Dendi, a bit of a story that one as well, did really well. I think he finished like eight and one. Yeah, he earned me so up, many points yesterday. Yeah, he earned you a lot of points. Yeah. But uh, Shane, he ended up going Quaswex. How yeah. is that this, these days in competitive gaming? Well, he only didn't learn any in Exhort for ages, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, I, I only had, what did he have, two in uh, Invoke? Yeah, he had two mm -hmm. in Invoke, I think, when he was level 11 or 12. Then and he, he skipped Exhort, which yeah. some people go Exhort for deafening, but he actually decided to skip it, I think, in lieu of just having a shorter cooldown. But in that game, he had so much damage through just spam that I don't think he needed the point in Exhort for really anything. And they had so much disable that deafening just seemed kind of yeah. worthless. Yeah. All right. The Yule Scepter as well helped him a lot. He got the Yules to stop the, bar uh, the Battler initiation. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, so he was really uh, the star of uh, maybe both of those games and a lot of points for Lumi <laughs> in the Fantasy League. Um, of course, as well, Alliance uh, against Sigma was the final game of the day. And as soon as we get through them, we'll be moving into the games because I believe Andy's pointing they might be ready. But Alliance versus Sigma. Uh, Sigma, again, like similar to VP, had a lot to prove. Alliance, everyone was kind of worrying, not worrying, but wondering at their form. Uh, I don't know if they got a true test against Sigma because they started with a level one Roche, uh, which pretty much puts you leaps and bounds ahead of your opponent and when you're considered the stronger going into the game, very hard to recover. But for you, Andy and Lumi, what was really the storyline there? There was just, like you said, level one Roche. They really couldn't do anything about it. This is well after the fact, of course. There was kind of like a, a fight going on here. But this was one of those situations where it felt like Alliance were actually ahead, but they didn't really do that well during the fight. It was kind of drawn out. There wasn't much focus fire to be had. And this was one of the more entertaining, I guess you could say, jukes of the entire day. And Miguel <laughs> actually manages to escape here after being doomed. Yeah, that was actually MVP Juke. Unfortunately, the team lost, so I don't know how much of an MVP race <laughs> but he is. But look at that, in. man. Yeah, That's so like, nice. Yeah, really, really good Juke. I think the the game ended as uh, Sigma didn't have enough damage to take yeah. down a Vanguard Doom, so um, they just kind of ran straight into uh, the entirety of Dire and didn't do anything. It, was, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Oh, they lost their first game, Sigma, and Alliance ended up winning. That was their first game, yes. I believe. So uh, we can take a look at the standings, and this is how day one kind of summed it up. And of course, you're going to see Na'Vi up top. They played 2-1-2, two, two. Alliance sitting just behind them. And of course, Fnatic losing their first game of the tournament. Very hard one, though, versus Na'Vi and Sigma also losing theirs and VP. So this is all going to change very drastically over even the course of the first week. And we'll see how that goes with today's schedule. And just so you know, when the games are getting starting or should be starting, we should be starting two minutes ago, the first match. I believe they're in the draft and we're joining momentarily. VP versus Rock's Kiss at 8 p.m. Alliance versus Meet Your Makers. And then at 9.15, Alliance again, but versus Team Dogs. If you're an Alliance fan, make sure you're uh, staying, uh, staying with us until the end. And with that being said, Dun, we dun, dun, normally dun. would intro the teams, but if they're in the draft, I'm just kind of like, let's just get in. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're ready to go. So. All right. Okay, we'll take it away. So uh, commentating, Shane's going to be joining you today. Mm -hmm. So uh, be nice to him. No, oh, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going into the draft. Um, Mr. Blue, Mr. Green, and we'll just call him Lumi for now. <laughs> we're going to bring you the game. All right, so first game of the day. Of course, Lumi's here with me. Shane's here with me. You guys can't see it, but that is seriously like the bluest shirt I think I've ever seen in my life. But aside from that, it's Rock's Kiss taken on VP. And I just want to start off by saying, 
it's really interesting seeing how heavily some teams favor specific heroes. Like these bands, in comparison to what we saw yesterday, they look almost nothing alike. It's yeah. completely different. Yeah, it's actually really nice to see the diversity of uh, heroes. Especially, I think, like, three, four years ago, there was a complaint that you only see the same 18, 20 heroes. And now I think we're up to some number of, like, 70, 80 even upwards of maybe even 90 heroes given a, a long span of time. So we're going to see a Crystal Maiden first pick, but this is after a Lich Tree Ban, which I'm not sure what that's about. And then on the other side, it's going to be Ancient Apparition as well as the Disruptor Ban. But we're going to see some sort of... Yeah, wow. there you go. Yeah, it's going to be a minus armor strategy coming out from Rock's Kiss. So VP and Rock's Kiss did run into each other lately. Uh, I think it's for the Nictolic West League. And uh, I believe... Uh, I think it was Rock's Kiss that was victorious. I'll double check on that so I don't give out the wrong information. So these teams have played each other recently. And yes, it was uh, Rock's Kiss that, that edged VP out in a best of three. Well, according to what I heard, Rock's Kiss is supposedly on a bit of a roll lately. They've yes. just been doing very, very well. And maybe it's on the back of picks like Dazzle and Slardar. But Shane, you, you saw this yesterday. What did you think about it when Navi ran it? It the uh, minus armor, it's so scary. Like all of a sudden, what did they have? Like minus 30 armor at like 12 minutes into the game? Something crazy like that. It's like an extra... Well, level 1 amp is minus 10. Yeah, and, the and then Weave is, I think, 20 seconds at all ranks. And mm -hmm. I want to say it's around like minus 7 or 0.75. Yeah, at level 1 per tick. And then it goes up to 1.25. So yeah, it's just walking into range of any of those heroes after you have a Weave on you already it just becomes fairly scary. And Rock's Kiss, they're going to get a third hero and it's going to be a Bane. If they have a little range character, like Plinkin at you, even like any character, even Bane, like with that kind of minus armor, he'd be hitting like a truck like... It's the same kind of thing when people say heroes like Troll Warlord turn your entire team into carries because of their physical damage output. It's kind of the same, except Trolls is applicable towards pushing as well, whereas Minus Armor is really only applicable towards fighting unless you have like Deso AC, in which case both of those do affect buildings. Yeah, Minus Armor is also really good in the sense that, let's say if you amp somebody on the enemy team, suddenly positioning becomes a lot more difficult uh, for that particular hero and that team because uh, knowing that you're, if you're going to be misstepping a single moment and you're going to just die to, for example, a Bane right clicking you, that's actually a big issue. So we're going to see Virtus Pro picking heroes that are uh, a little bit more durable in nature. Naga Siren has that high base armor of 5 or 6, uh, and she's going to get a little bit more armor. And I think we're going to see that carry Naga style uh, that I guess are TZ popular in the solo mid position. But that's actually a kind of hard thing to do. The micro for, for Naga to, to play the Radiance uh, and then just split farm all over the map, it's very, very difficult. And we'll see if uh, G playing in the mid position could do it well enough. Do you think they uh, pick Naga to counter pick the... The way that I see it right now is when you have a team like Rock's Kiss, they have very good control, they have a Blink Initiator. Having uh, an Abaddon and having a Naga Siren are two methods to kind of reset the fight. Yes. Which I think is really important because, as Lumi said, positioning becomes very key, especially when you have a debuff like Amplify on you or the Weave is maybe just tick too much and you don't feel comfortable taking the fight. So you can reset, run away, you can use it to solidify kills. Later in the game, once the Slaughter gets his BKB, you can use it simply to isolate him and you can still ensnare through BKB. So you can just lock him in place while the rest of the team can't really help him, and you can just kill him straight away. So there's a lot of ways that you can actually run this. In that sense, I do like VP's first three picks quite a bit, just in terms of how they function against Rock's Kiss. But I'm not entirely sold on if it's going to be a mid-Naga yet. Okay. we still got a couple more picks to go, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I'm just not sure yet. Yeah, we've seen a lot of tri-lane tri Naga back in the days of TI2, and let's not forget she's still a very viable tri-lane hero. Uh, we've seen Naga just picking up a poor man's shield, and you just run into three heroes and be like, well, come at me, bros, and just tank everything up. And of course, Crystal Maiden in a bad and gives you the ability to dive and whatnot. Rock's Kiss is going to pick up a ranged hero in the form of Marana, and Shane, you brought it up earlier with that kind of minus armor. You talked about Bane. Marana definitely is going to pack that punch. Uh, and it's a quick reply here with the Darksaber, a hero that I'm Low question about, is, are we going to go for the Womble combo here? The, the sleep set up Darkstair into something amazing? Question mark? Shane has experience with refreshers and lightness. <laughs> How did it go? <laughs> oh, we were talking about it in the car earlier. Wepas had this great idea. He saw it in a movie where you get <laughs> Naga, uh, Torin, Chieftain, and you do this like refresher combo uh -oh. where you do the two ulties. And was that was that like the uh, shitty digest? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, uh, yeah Enigma's That's video. That's amazing, yeah, man. The right, so, so this was a great idea on paper, and we try it, and nothing works, and it all goes to shit. So basically, that's... So you're not a fan of those no, kind of combos? I don't, I'm not a fan at all. So with the Darkseer, for me, I don't understand what his role's supposed to be in this team. Like, I see a hero who could be construed as a carry in the Naga Siren. I see at least 
one support, maybe the um, Abaddon is going to be supporting as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's going to be getting a little bit of farm, who knows. But we haven't seen what the last pick is yet, so we're not sure if it's going to be mid-Naga, like Lumi said, or if it's going to be a safe lane farming Naga. For Rock's Kiss, their lanes can be pretty much anything. They can mid Murana, they can off-lane Murana, they can put two mid. We saw actually a little bit of that yesterday. People were just kind of sitting around mid quite a bit, which is a bit strange to see. But the options, I think, for Rock's Kiss are pretty much endless in terms of what their laning phase could be. Yeah, Bane Marana is a very good combo. Bane Slaughter is a very good combo. So it's uh, it's hard to actually guess what Rock's Kiss is doing. And I'm going to echo your point for the Darkster. Like, he does have some utility, for example, surging people away from Bane chasing you. Uh, Vacuum as a pseudo long-range way to deal with Bane. But it's just kind of like awkward also another very awkward interaction with the sleep uh, versus dazzle weave is yeah sure you could sleep the enemy team but if weave is on you is it's going to keep on ticking and the minus armor is going to be absolutely insane if you choose to take the five after you sleep so most likely naga sleep uh if you don't use it in a wombo combo way you have to really use it as an escape uh escape mechanism and ember spirit gets ticked out very, very late as Ember Spear is a hero that both these teams have picked in that best of three that they play against each other. Hmm. Invoker. Shane, you play some Invoker, right? I play a lot of Invoker. Do you play Exord or Quaswax? I used to play Exord all the time, and then someone taught me, like, well, they buffed the EMP like three times in a row or twice in a row, and I was like, I have to give this a bash. Oh. Yeah, the, the new Quaswax Invoker is um, pretty, pretty it's ridiculous. Easy. It's easy to play as well. Well, it's, yeah, ease of execution is always something that's important, even at a pro level, because it kind of, it signifies stability, right? Like, you're not mm -hmm. going to do poorly in most situations, but it looks like it's going to be an Invoker versus a Shadow Fiend mid, which is like an age-old matchup that we haven't seen in quite a while. That was back when TA was popular, and you used to see, like, TA Invoker mm -hmm. or SF against... And Quop as well. Yeah, and Queen of Pain. Those were, like, the four top-tier mids, and people like Mushi and Dendi and all those players were known for, so we're going to get to see one of those, and... If I had to say, I do like Rock's Kiss lineup better. I feel like they can actually function more, and having EMP against a team with Naga and Abaddon is like really sick. Do you if think he's going EMP. Yeah, do you think they'll go Exhort just to get the Forge Spirit minus armor as well, on top of all the other minus armor? I think EMP functions way better against VP than going Exhort, because you have two, maybe three heroes who more straight. or less go out of mana straight away mm. from just one high-level EMP hitting on them. And when you're playing against heroes who probably aren't going to have more than one pair of Arcane Boots for a majority of the game, and I mainly mean like just Darkseer, right? Like he's going to get them, but maybe you know the Abaddon or the CM can't afford them for quite a while. So when you only have one, it's very hard to actually fight. Two is kind of the minimum. We saw that yesterday. I believe it was actually Alliance who had two pair when they were playing against an yes, EMP and Alliance. Yeah, yeah, Alliance had it. So it's been a long time since people start, were picking this hero like a lot, but now since he's coming back into the limelight a bit, I think it's kind of necessary to just become accustomed to that again. They also nerfed the mana boots, didn't they? They get increased the cost to use them. Yeah, so there, there is... But it was only 10, right? Like 10 increased mana cost? Yeah, but for like Abaddon, who only has like, what, 300 mana? Yeah, I something? actually think there is a good chance where EMP takes yeah. you away from that requisite of whatever exactly, amount yeah. to, then, to use that EMP. So we'll see. No, it's going to be Exhort Invoker. So huh? it's going to be that quick Forge Spirit. Obviously... There is a small chance that he's getting the first point into Exhort just for the laning, but I, I kind of doubt it. I think most pros nowadays have learned uh, how to last it with Quas and whatnot. So, yeah, it's going to be the quick Forge Spirit, which is going to be a very, very good single target point damage, especially for heroes like Crystal Maiden, who is already a very, very frail lady. So we'll see how things go. This is very interesting. I think Crystal Maiden is actually going towards the top lane to drop off a couple wards, and it's going to be an aggressive try. I'm a bit torn about this choice from Solo. So... Shane, I'm going I'm to pose you a question, okay? If you're playing 1v1 mid and you're against an SF, even if the other team is pretty susceptible to Quaswex, do you go Exort just to make sure that you can keep the SF down a little bit more? Or do you go Quaswex and maybe hope that your offlane Marana can try to pressure him? Because as soon as they see this aggressive try line, my first thought is that if you're dodging each other and the Marana is going to be able to farm at least a decent amount, she can potentially rotate. You, like, what would you rather do? I think you have more potential for solo kill with uh, Exhort, to be honest, if you can get that cold snap sunstrike thing. Yeah. But if the you're Quaswex, you need someone else. I think it's it's too hard to do it on your own. So maybe it's that's the idea, that they don't have to rotate so it. So you'd rather play it for the laning phase in the early game? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm, I'm actually with the Exhort build here as well, especially because there's a trialing versus trialing top. You know your Sunstrike's going to be landing a, a good number of time. And also, if you do have the better laning against the Shadow Fiend, who, is, who else is going to farm well on VP? I mean, Naga, we assume she's not going to farm too well because of her low base damage and the fact that she is an offensive trialing. And Darkseer versus Marana. Oh, sorry. 
I just completely had a brain fart. Illidan's playing Naga safely. Yeah, it's safe. Uh, Naga yeah, never versus, mind, never um, mind. N Naga's gonna do well here against Murana, right? Especially with the poor man's show and high base armor. Yeah, he got pooled as well, so yeah. he's got a couple of extra tangos. It's a bit interesting to me, though, that he decided to go for illusions first, but doing quite some damage in top lane. We can already see a crush going off there on uh, Jotam, but I. I don't know how this matchup's gonna go, really. I mean, Murana's base damage is not known for being significant, right? Like 47, no. yeah. not the best. So I think he'll, yeah, I think he'll be fine. But I think Sunstrike still stands and makes a very, very powerful addition to the top lane, especially when you have Nightmare, Crush, and everything else. I think they're gonna go right here on Thunder. Thunder is gonna, where's the Nightmare? No Nightmare just yet. They're gonna just straight up Crush. Crush is gonna cut. Um, well, what a shield. There's a shield. Well, that that's gonna mess everything up, but they wanted yeah. to do the Crush Sunstrike combo. I love how you still call them Thunder. That, I mean, just, that totally made me smile. Uh, well, is it Z or Thunder? Name, I don't it? know. It's it's just Thunder to me. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But yeah, I, I think that the Sunstrike, just seeing the Abaddon shield once, it's like suddenly things seem tough. Yeah, fair plan yeah. out the window. Does the Abaddon shield get rid of the weave from the Dazzle? I don't think it gets rid of ulties. Well, actually, it gets rid of Poison Nova. I, I know mean, that for sure. I don't think... Yeah, it gets off like Beastmaster Roar, for example. Like, I don't think OT or not OT has anything to do with it. But I for Weave, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think it actually removes Weave. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it does? Question mark? I don't think it does. Well, we'll see. Well, one, one of us, us is wrong. Yeah, one of us <laughs> so is very wrong. We'll find out. I'm sure the chat will be hollering about mm -hmm. it in like two minutes from now when the delay actually catches up. But I'm not really... This dual offlane, it's getting some experience, but I feel to a certain point it might just be better for the Darkseer to just go farm his jungle. Like... He's not really going to get as much as if he just goes to the woods, and the Abaddon doesn't really need anyone to sit up here and help him. He's not going to die, and they can't get in any more aggressive position than they have been, even with two heroes, because it's still very scary. Yeah, I, I mean, the option here for Roxkiss right now is they can't kill anybody else in the lane. Obviously, the shield's going to come out, so do you try to go for the Bane, but... Or sorry, you try to go for the Abaddon. The Abaddon should just stay back. Uh, and let Thunder take the hate. And Thunder is going to take some hate. He takes uh -oh. a two-get to the face right now. Worst, no Nightmare just yet. You can see Jonam looking for the shield. They're doing a ton of damage. There, uh, there's a shield. Where's the Nightmare? There's a Nightmare. The shield came out way early. Where's the Slaughter, though? Slaughter playing with creeps. I think they, they're not going to kill Thunder. But they do good harass, so that's pretty good. It's actually surprising creeps. that he actually lived there because Jotam wasn't even level 2. Yeah. Like, all he had was a shield. He didn't even have a miscoil. But yeah, our cert gets away. No big deal. The patience they show is ridiculous. Isn't but, it? yeah, he, he has to go back to base now, and I think he should just go to jungle, like you said. I think he might just make that transition, honestly. What would you do, Shane? Would you go do back you leave to that? on up there on his own? The well, here's the thing. C CM's already jungling. Well, what were, they, what were they doing, even with two of them? Like, they were sitting up here, and they weren't getting really any experience to speak of, and mm. Darkseer can jungle pretty effectively, even at very low level. Do you think it, you can leave Abaddon there, though? He'll be okay. He's going to TP back. He bought a TP, so I don't think he's actually going to be going to the woods at all. And yeah, yeah C CM's in the jungle, so maybe, maybe that's why she, they're letting her to you. The CM she doesn't wants. jungle yeah. the whole jungle. Yeah, she no, she's roaming, gun. right? Yeah, she jungle up to level 3, and this is the correct way to do it. You don't jungle all the way to like 8 or 9 with the Midas, which I see in pups way too much. It's going to be a smoking on the bot lane. They're going to go on Sedoi. Sedoi would leave Vavelo. Should be okay. There's even a chance that she kills the CM. Good harass coming out against Illidan. Illidan maybe trying to bait out a leap. He is for sure. Oh, yep, there it is. There you go. CM gonna come in. Frostbite Nova. Illidan dropping low, but the Pro Man Shield keeping him alive. Oh. Arrow dodge and Sedoi. Well, Sunstrike's oh, gonna come in. It's oh gonna get the God. kill. Sedoi's still alive. He's gonna trade the right clicks. The creeps are coming in. NS gonna clean things up, but huge win here for Sedoi. Uh, I think Invoker got half the experience, or did Sedoi get all of it? Top lane as well. I think he got. All of it, actually, yeah, but yeah, looks like Arsart's trying to go on Goblack right here, doing a little bit of damage. Crutch comes in, and I think Arsart's actually going to end up dropping here. Jotam is one second on his miscoil, but he can't go for the kill now. Yol on retreat. Looks like there's going to be a nightmare on a Jotam. Should be enough to line up another Crush, and yeah, that's just going to be two heroes dead in the top lane. So a double kill for the Slardar. Not the greatest uh, engagement by VP. I'm not entirely sure why they decided to go for that, honestly, in a 2v3, especially when you have a Bane, because then the 2v3 essentially becomes a 1v3. You can't bounce the Nightmare effectively as just two heroes. There's mm -hmm. no way to really do that, especially when you're outnumbered already. So, not entirely sure how I feel about them pressuring that so hard, but one thing we've kind of been skipping on a little bit, we focused a lot on top, we focused a lot on bottom. This middle matchup, G is destroying right now. Yes. Like he's 26 and 5, and Solo is, is 14 and well, 8. Well, you play this mid matchup a lot more than I guess I have. Maybe Shane, you play this matchup more too as well. Who should it favor? I. I it, 
I feel like if you go Exert Invoker, you should yeah, dominate. Yeah, you should be winning, right? Especially yeah. with uh, you know uh, Cold Snap and whatever else. He hasn't used the babies at all. He's just using he has Cold Snap on Sunstrike Invoked. No babies. Yeah, Forge Spirits are kind of the whole landing presence with yeah. that build. I mean, allegedly, I'm I'm actually not great at using them either, but I know that's what you're supposed to do, because oh, yeah. even if you have three points in Exort, they're not really that durable, but you can use them to bully the other person in the lane around. And there really hasn't been a whole lot of pressure on mid. The CM has only gotten bottom, and other than that, it's just been sitting in the woods pretty much, so NS presence on the map hasn't been that fantastic as of yet. He did help his team get one kill, but at the cost of a safe lane farmer, so I'm just a bit surprised that it's going this heavily in G's favor. Yeah, with that said, though, Solo is helping out with things like Sunstrike elsewhere, oh, so... God black going to spot out okay. G. Here comes the Nightmare, and they're going to be Sunstrike. able to pick up the Haste Rune. They're going to line up the Sunstrike right on top of the Nightmare. Shadow Wave is there as well, and G has no chance. He's just uh, okay. super dead. Yep. Very nice kill. Bane, unfortunately, gets the last hit, which uh, I'm sure Invoker awesome. really, really wants. He does have the Phase Boots. And what do you feel about Phase Boot on a hero like Invoker? I know Dendi really loves things like Arcane sometimes even, uh, or just keeps it a basic, or sometimes even go Treads. What's your thought on Phase uh, for a non-Wex Quas Invoker? I don't think... I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I don't think you Because for me, when you get phase, it's because you want the base damage if you're going Quas Wex to make your auto attacks feasible to last hit with, or just, you know, supplement your damage a tiny bit more. Because when you already have high base damage, you typically want to get attack speed. Or if you have high attack speed, you want to get base damage. So just the way it, I guess, maths out, maybe you know more than I do about that, but. I just feel as though your auto attack damage is Exort is significant enough to warrant going treads just for the attack speed. Yeah, to be fair, it is one of the cheapest way to get plus four, 24 damage early game, so maybe that's something that w w that's what he's going for. And he's also very close to level 9, which is the magical level where you get two Forge Spirit in combination of your plus 24 damage. That could hurt really, really a lot in the early game, so maybe he's going for something like that. But G, doing well so far. He is uh, most likely going to go something like treads into BKB, but we did see Danny go blink yesterday. So oh, we'll see. If on a Sedoi. He's going to yeah. leap away, and he's actually going to get nightmared up as well by Goblack. So, a really nice reaction. No death going to be had. And this Darkseer, man, he has just traversed the entire map. He's only level four. He has no home to go to. Yeah, he. I mean, I really would start thinking about just jungling if I were him. Because if he's supposed to be the team's mech carrier, our starts ages away, man. It's just so far. Yeah. John M in the top lane takes a little bit of harass. Maybe John M's going to be the uh, mech carrier. Or the. He's not farmed at all either, so... It's not looking too good here for VP. Their lanes no. are not really winning, aside from G, but bot lane looks like we're going to see a little bit of rotation. It looks like they want to try to do something. There is another leap up on Sedoi, so yeah. Th this is one of the situations where VP is stuck between a rock and a hard place because all the lanes that Roxkiss have are so hard to gank. And there's a Vanguard on Spyro. It's not too hard to gank, uh, Exort, Quas, and Fogger, to be fair. Yeah, but it's very easy to react. Like, ganking Dire on this side when you have these kind of heroes that can tp like bane and you have mirana ulti on top of that it's very difficult to be able to actually get a kill with the low damage output that they have on their team arrow gonna line up on illidan sunstrike to follow Ooh. it up this song not even able to be channeled perfect perfect uh chain sun here ns hangs around a little bit too long I mean, gotta careful he knows that these suns are down momentarily so he should be okay there's a ping going on invoker on the mid lane maybe saying man we need to gank this guy because once he does get to level nine I, I think sf just have to leave the lane at that point he really cannot deal with two four spirit well not only that but there's actually been more rotation coming out from the side of rocks kiss than there has vp so I feel like the SF is just going to not have a whole heck of a lot of room to function. Radiance and since Illidan isn't really doing much better, he's 0-2 right now. Yep. There's not really a whole lot of plan B. I think a lot of what VP wanted to do is try to take mid-game fights, because their team in that regard is strong enough to, I think, actually stand against Rock's Kiss. But the laning phase has just gone so poorly for them so far. Yeah. This what? is before the minus armor comes into play as well. Radiance this is just the laning phase. Like, if they have an advantage going into the, like the mid-game, I think they'll just crush. Like. I think a lot of people see the minus armor in a draft and be like, oh yeah, that's what they're going for. But I, I really think minus armor doesn't really kick in until like 25, 30 minutes. It's more of a mid to late game kind of thing. I think right now it's just hero composition. For example, 6-3-3 six, 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 three, three is almost going to be uh, going towards this blink dagger. And once that blink comes out, what, what answer is there for VP? I guess they could song, I guess they have shield. But when you're running away from heroes like Slaughter and uh, Marana, you're, you're not in a good shape. I actually kind of disagree with the minus armor not being good early game because Sardar's level 1 amp is minus 10 armor and that's on demand. I kind of agree with Weave because it takes time sure, okay. for the ability to actually stack it up, but if you just amp somebody, no one really even has 10 armor 
at this stage in the game. So you're already hitting harder than you would normally against those heroes, and physical damage output, no matter what stage of the game, I think is always going to be pretty good. So completely fair. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen him am anything yet. To well, yeah, but, I mean, he's safe lane farming, so yeah, he yeah, hasn't yeah. he hasn't done much. But I'm just saying, like, once he does start um, deciding to come to fights, which is probably going to be after that blank dagger, like yeah, you had mentioned. 900 gold. Yeah, he's close. Yeah, this game's going to have to go somewhere soon for uh, Virtus Pro because, I mean, I guess by design their lineup doesn't do anything. Illidan has a Ring of Health, which I'm not sure what oh, that. Going for a dive on G in top lane. There's a minus armor. Yeah, Jotam's there. Everybody runs. You know, when you have heroes like Crystal Maiden and Abaddon, they're not exactly the most mobile counter ganker, so they can't do anything. Thunder might be in a little bit of trouble in the mid lane here. If he gets spotted out, he's dead. Yeah, I, I think he's kind of aware of that <laughs> given his positioning. Yeah. He's just like, I don't want to be anywhere near this. I'm no just spot lane here. Illidan gets arrowed by oh. Sadoi, and that's going to be one kill. NS very, very slow. Yolt's going to get the uh, Sun Strike. That's going to land it to the face. NS goes down as well. Just surgical extraction here coming out from Roxkiss all over the map, and I think that tier one bot is also going to go down quick. I still don't know, by the way, what Naga Siren's going for with that Ring of Health. Lincoln's, I guess. Is it? That was the old, um, the very, very old Chinese way of building Naga was like Treads Lincoln. It's so horrible. But it's, it's not good when you're behind. Yes. Like, you can't really afford to. It's the same reason why you typically don't buy Radiance when you're behind because you have to get another item on top of that for your hero to start it's becoming a threat to the other team. Yeah. But. The other reason, too, is when you're losing, you don't have as much of the map to farm. Yes. So if you get an item to farm... Oh, speaking of, G, gonna get Fiend's Grip here. They're gonna pop Moonlight Shadow. Ice Wall by Solo. Man, the starter just wants to go in. Shot him, just explodes. He's not even level 6 yet. NS is gonna be soon to follow. It's gonna be a killing spree for him. That's a bad sign. 633 yeah. got a double kill without having access to his Bling Dagger. Now he picks it up. And with hero like Slaughter, you could easily pop off the Lincoln on Roshan and take a free Aegis. And I think that's perhaps what they're looking towards to do. Uh, there's no way VP could challenge this, given the fact that what Darkseer is level 6. I guess Naga is still with a sleep, but Naga's sleep is down. So never mind. Free Aegis here coming out for Roxkiss. Minus armor, man. Even Roshan can't stand to this. That's a nice thing about these kind of strategies, too, is when you play them on Dire, as soon as you have one opportunity for Roche, you know you can get it guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And since the starter has Vanguard, it's really, really easy for them to tank it up. And they already have Yol on the Dazzle as well, so there's going to be heals on top of it. And with an Aegis on 633, it's going to be... Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe the beginning of the end here for VP. Yeah, they're going to have to have some magical team fight where you kind of remove three or four members of Rock's Kiss in, in the flat go, but they just don't have that burst on top lane. And that takes the arrow, a Star Storm, and that's going to be a Sedoi. Maybe going to chase a little bit here. They will have... Yeah, the Slaughter is coming in. Blink. Where's the crush? There is a crush. He's going to use his M damage for a Sunstrike. going to come in as well. Illidan, very tanky, but not tank enough. And that's going to be yet another kill here for 633. I just like the way that they could chase so far with things like Blink, Leap, yeah. Gigi gets okay. called, and it's not an early not Gigi. Not even surprised. Yeah. 13 minutes, done. I was about to say, like, they have a chance. If they get the Naga sleep into the Shadow Fiend ulti. Yeah, you I know, don't know. I've seen things happen before like that. So. so, Shane, I know we, Lumi and I talked quite a bit that game, but where do you think it all kind of went wrong for them? Um, basically, when they sent them two lads to the top lane, they just they couldn't do anything. Like, the two just, lads, I like that word choice. They were just standing but there. But do you think that maybe going to the jungle for the Darkseer would have been a better option? Just well, so he had something. Because yeah. the only thing that resulted from Darkseer being top was they took a fight they couldn't win and they both died. Mm. I don't know. Like Then it just leaves Abaddon, level one, just sitting there. Right. I don't know. They needed to do something different. Maybe not Abaddon, maybe something else, and send Darkseer to the jungle completely. I think it's because they, they did did nothing. It feels like to me they picked a team that was based around defending, defending, Defend defending, and then hope that somehow Illidan and G can carry us. Even defending the draft, like I'd say they they picked Shadow Fiend, I guess, to stop them picking the because the Valkyries picked last, then they picked Shadow Fiend after that, did they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's how it went. But uh, that's gonna be the first game of the day, mm -hmm. Lumi and Shane. I think. Um, that's pretty much all we can say. It's a 13-minute GG, but it's not really all that surprising <laughs> really? given the circumstances. But we'll be back, guys, after a short break for more Asus RG Dream League coming up next.
Hi guys, I'm AP and I'm going to explain to you why the Cave XCD 5.1 Digital is my perfect choice for Gaming Dota 2. Because of the fully immersive true 5.1 surround sound card and the three driver units per ear, the sound always stays the perfect same. In addition, I can pair my smartphone to my headset so I don't have to take it off when I receive a call while in-game and that makes it perfect for long in-game sessions. Thank you.